Welcome to Enterprise Epics, where we unravel the monumental tales of businesses that have soared to unimaginable heights and plummeted to depths that were once inconceivable. Today, we're slicing into a story so rich and so layered that it could only belong to a once ubiquitous name in the fast food realm, Sparrow. Imagine, if you will, a bustling food court in the heart of a thriving mall. The aroma of freshly baked pizza wafts through the air, luring you closer. This isn't just any pizza. It's a slice of the American dream, crafted by a family whose name became synonymous with quick Italian fare. But the sweet scent of success didn't linger forever. What happened to this culinary cornerstone that once stood proudly in every mall, airport, and campus? The Sparrow Saga begins not in America, but in the cobblestone streets of Naples, Italy. It was here, in the 1950s, that Carmela and Gennaro Sparrow, along with their three sons, harbored dreams of prosperity and a better life. With little more than hope and tenacity, they embarked on a voyage to the New World, specifically to Brooklyn, New York. They were artisans of ambition, with Carmela's unique talent for crafting doll clothing, surprisingly a lucrative niche, and Gennaro's expertise in the deli business, which gave them the foothold they needed in their adopted home. After years of scrimping and saving, 1956 marked a new chapter. The Sparrows, through sheer determination, opened a humble Italian deli. It wasn't long before they noticed a peculiar trend. Customers didn't just take their food home, they stood right there, savoring it, bite by bite. It was an unspoken invitation to transform their space, and so a few tables and chairs emerged, birthing a makeshift dining experience. The Sparrows, ever observant, recognized another golden opportunity, the foot traffic of shift workers, those time-starved souls in search of a quick, satisfying meal. This was the genesis of the Buy the Slice business model, a game changer that propelled the humble deli toward its destiny as a pizzeria. By the mid-1960s, the very first Sparrow restaurant dedicated solely to pizza opened its doors. The Sparrow family, though, had an unusual take on expansion. Franchising, the common catalyst for growth, was initially off the table. They preferred the control and intimacy of ownership. Yet, the food court beckoned a novel stage that fit their vision perfectly. Compact, easy to operate, and nestled in the public eye, these mini restaurants were a brilliant strategic play. Plus, with every passerby in the mall, the Sparrow name became more than a sign above a counter. It became a mainstay in the American culinary consciousness. Transitioning into the stock market in the 1980s and later embracing the franchising they once eschewed, Sparrows saw explosive growth. It was an era of unabated expansion fueled by public investment and strategic franchising, leading to hundreds of new locations. By the end of the 1990s, the Sparrow name adorned nearly 800 eateries. But as we delve deeper into our tale, let's pause for a moment. If you're enjoying this journey through the peaks and valleys of Sparrow's storied past, remember to subscribe to Enterprise Epics. Your support helps us bring these intricate narratives to life. Now, let's press on. As the new millennium dawned, a shift occurred. Ownership changed hands from a tight-knit family to a private equity firm. And soon after, a storm brewed on the horizon. A series of unfortunate events, a recession, the waning allure of malls, and rising costs of ingredients conspired against Sparrow. Their pizza, once a novel offering, now faced criticism. Convenience had been their kingpin, but at what cost? The balance of affordability, taste, and speed seemed misaligned when standing against the juggernauts of Pizza Hut and Domino's. And then, there was size. Sparrow's footprint, though significant, paled in comparison to the industry titans, making each blow from the market's fists feel that much heavier. Debt, an unseen but ever-present force, mounted in the shadows. Sparrow had borrowed heavily for growth, and when the pillars of their empire, malls, began their slow decline, the repayments became untenable. Not once, but twice, did Sparrow file for bankruptcy in 2011 and 2014, attempting to shed the financial burdens that shackled their ability to adapt and evolve. In these filings, we see not failure, but the glaring truth of business volatility, the unpredictable roller coaster that all enterprises must ride.
Sparrow's story is one of undoubted success, marked by an era of expansion and cultural impact, but also of a harsh reality check as the tides of commerce changed. Yet, amid the trials and tribulations, Sparrow's tale is more than a ledger of wins and losses. It's a reflection of the American culinary landscape, a canvas that they helped paint with shades of Italian-American zest. Let's cast our minds back to those early days, the family's relentless spirit embarking on an odyssey from a distant Italian province to the bustling streets of Brooklyn. Their venture began as a dream, whispered in a foreign tongue, becoming a reality shouted from the rooftops of every food court that bore their name. Within the walls of Sparrow's burgeoning empire, there was more than the sizzle of pizza and the steam of pasta. It was the sound of a cultural symphony. They weren't just serving meals, they were serving memories. Quick bites fused with the essence of an Italian kitchen. Each slice served was a piece of heritage, a nod to their Neapolitan roots that they never forgot, even as they sewed themselves into the fabric of Americana. The company's resilience was tested not just by external market forces, but by the shifting tastes of a nation. Sparrow had to contend with the rise of health-conscious eating, the explosion of fast casual dining, and a generation that increasingly turned to digital delivery services over the allure of the food court. These forces demanded adaptability, a trait that Sparrow had demonstrated since its inception, but found challenging as the world sped up around it. As Sparrow faced these headwinds, they realized that their strength lay in their ability to connect with the beating heart of America's diverse palate. They introduced healthier options, experimented with new flavors, and ventured into new formats like standalone stores and drive throughs Yet, despite these efforts, the question remained, how could they recapture the magic that once made them a mainstay in the minds of the hungry consumer? Now, as we examine the threads of Sparrow's story, they weave a pattern of inspiration. Here lies a business that built its foundation on the principle that anyone, no matter how humble their beginnings, could reach the zenith of the American gastronomic domain. They demonstrated that success is not just about expanding one's territory, but also about enriching the cultural tapestry of their customers. Sparrow's journey is a stark reminder that in the American marketplace, evolution is not just a strategy, it's a survival mechanism. The key to their endurance, it seems, lies in their relentless pursuit of innovation, within their recipes, their service, and their identity. Today, Sparrow is reimagining itself, focusing on express markets and international ventures. Their legacy, a testament to the American dream, serves as both a cautionary tale and an inspiration. It's a narrative that encapsulates the quintessence of enterprise epics, stories of businesses and the people behind them, of ambitions ignited and tested, of the never-ending pursuit of prosperity. As we close the book on this chapter of Sparrow, remember that each episode of Enterprise Epics is a lesson in the grand course of business. We'll be back with another slice of the economic narrative. But until then, keep dreaming, keep building, and keep tuning into Enterprise Epics. For the next episode, we may delve into the technological disruptions that reshaped traditional businesses. Or perhaps, the listeners might be intrigued by the comeback stories of companies that have managed to claw back from the brink. If you've been captivated by this slice of corporate storytelling, show your support with a like. It's one click for you, but it means a whole lot to us. And don't let the story end here. Subscribe and hit that bell icon to join our Enterprise Epics community. Stay tuned and let us know what you think in the comments below.